Welcome to London, a bustling modern metropolis. I'd be standing out on that balcony right now if it wasn't as cold as hell. A city full of life and culture, but unfortunately for our purposes, not much death. But Caitlin, London is full of death. Take Parliament, where it's technically illegal to die even though both its architects died while it was being built and Westminster Abbey, where everyone from Queen Elizabeth to Dickens to Darwin is buried. Death is everywhere. You just have to know where to look. That's so interesting. You know so much about London, but you don't even sound British. Caitlin, it's Lindsay. Uh, hi, Lindsay. I'm part of the order? You've been living in my flat for the past three weeks? <laughs> Every city has a deathy past, but the cool thing about London is that it's so old, especially compared to <clears throat> America, that it's quite literally built on the dead. There was the Black Death in 1348, and the Great Plague of 1665, where over a hundred thousand people died. As the historian Lindsay Fitzharris said, Caitlin, I'm right here. You want me to say the line? No, that, that's, that's okay. During the plague, those more poetically inclined might say that these people just disappeared as if by magic. But the truth of the matter is, they did not disappear. They suffered excruciating and agonizing deaths and left behind thousands upon thousands of stinking, rotting corpses in the wake of their collective demise. The bodies way overflowed the local churchyard to the point that pits had to be dug around the city to accommodate them. What do those pits look like today? Christchurch Gardens in Westminster, where people go to relax, picnic, listen to music, generally any and all park-like activities, none the wiser that they're sitting on a 17th century plague pit. These pits are all over the city, including one right down the road at a school under a football field. Hey America, that's soccer to you. And it's not just plague pits. 19th century London had a corpse problem. Too many bodies, not enough local burial and churchyards. In 1822, Enon Chapel opened for worship on the ground floor and body interments in the basement. The minister took the family's money and stacked coffins up to the ceiling, depositing some of the bodies in the sewer. The stench was unbearable. After the minister died, new tenants took over and turned the building into a dance hall advertising you could come and dance on the dead. When the building was finally excavated, they estimated that the minister had improperly buried 12,000 people in this fashion. The mid-19th century was a period of sanitation reform, and Londoners were sure falsely, I might add, that corpse miasma was floating around and making people sick. So plans were made to close the old London burial grounds and open large public cemeteries, including one plan for a giant pyramid that would contain five million dead Londoners. The pyramid was never built, alas. By the 1860s, larger garden cemeteries surrounded the city. Many of the old London burial grounds had their tombstones cleared away and became public parks. Even the most death-aware of us can be taken in by London's secret corpses. I was going for a radio interview the other day and we had some time to spare. I stopped at a lovely little park on a lovely little day, laid down under a tree with the dappled sunshine. As we left, I looked at the plaque and the name of the park. It was Spa Fields. The spa fields, once a wildly overcrowded burial ground that was a haven for body snatchers. Much of what we know about London's burial grounds is because of a woman named Isabella Holmes. Death nerds, we have a new hero. Her book, which came out in 1896, documented 362, 41 of which were still in use, and 90 which had become public gardens or playgrounds. The important thing to remember is that they're still finding bodies all the time in London. While they were developing an office complex, they found 10,516 burials in what was the medieval Spitalfield Cemetery. Just a few months ago, while constructing a new Liverpool Street rail station, they excavated 3,000 skeletons from the 16th to 17th century. 
Then there's good old King Richard III, Mad King of Tudor legend, allegedly found under a car park in Leicester and then reburied in March of this year. As someone once told me, death is everywhere. You just have to know where to look. I said that! I said that a few minutes ago! Let me know in the comments what your favorite city is for secret death, and if you like this more historical type video, because I really enjoyed making it. While you're at it, subscribe to this channel and... Lindsay's! Lindsay's channel! Brought to you with support from People's Memorial Association and the Co-op Funeral Home, and donations from viewers like you.